few historical fantasy series can beat Game of Thrones, but we'd be lying if we said Vikings wasn't the close second. The History Channel gave us a drama with top-tier storytelling and production, and luckily, Valhalla was released earlier this year. We just can't seem to get enough of this show. In this video, we'll talk about other historical shows you can watch while waiting to hear from Freitas and Harald. First off, we've got a Spanish historical drama. The first season of Boundless just dropped two months back, and it got an 82% rating on Rotten Tomatoes almost instantly, which only goes to show how well-produced it is. The show's based on the first trip around the globe, which we all remember learning in our history classes. You know, right before a violent period of colonization and slavery, just the good old travel era. Before Columbus, there was Ferdinand Magellan, who wanted to prove to Portuguese royalty that there were other lands, better lands. The production of this series is large-scale, exactly like you'd expect from a historical fantasy series. The whole show is about how these warriors plunder and pillage the places they travel to. Sound familiar? That's literally the job of the Vikings. Amazon didn't really advertise this one in the United States, States, but it's definitely worth checking out. Second, more ships and traveling with Marco Polo. No, not like the game, like the actual historical figure. Marco Polo, an explorer from Venice, gets caught up in the power struggles and politics of the Mongol Empire. We also get to see 13th century China, which is pretty rare for TV shows. Okay, so maybe the show's not 100% historically accurate, but it's definitely interesting. Everything's been done pretty well, from the acting to the direction. We thought it was smart that they made the characters speak English, obviously because most viewers are Americans who hate subtitles. Seriously, what's wrong with reading text on the screen? The characters also speak their native languages from time to time, making for an interesting mix. Also, anyone who says it's not true to history has no idea what they're talking about. Even experts think that Polo never went to the places he said he did. We'll never really know. Instead of focusing on the flaws and comparing it to shows like Vikings and Game of Thrones, enjoy a rare look into the rich history of Asia. Then, we've got Black Sails. We get it, people like historical dramas, but they don't really have to be true or accurate. As long as they let us get away from the real world, they'll do just fine. Black Sails is one of these shows. This star's drama's ready to pull you into its dangerous and beautiful world. Both shows are alike in a lot of ways. They're both about ruthless bandits who appear out of nowhere, rob and kill people, and then leave just as quickly. The story revolves around Captain Flint and his crew as they steal from ships and cause trouble on the sea. We think Stars has gone above and beyond with this one. It's got everything you need to fill the Viking-shaped hole in your heart. Pirates, blood, and a lot of high-voltage drama. They did a great job of staying on track during the first three seasons with the main plot. In terms of how it looks, it's always been ahead of other historical dramas. This show's as beautiful as it gets. Sometimes it looks a little too fancy, but who cares? It's still fun to watch. And imagine a show about the Roman Republic. Set in the first century BCE, this show's about the last days of the Roman Republic before it became a dictatorship. We got to see the transformation of the city from the point of view of Octavian Augustus, Lucius Verenus, Titus Pullo, and a few other important characters. Again, it's not even close to being true to history, and it doesn't have to be. In all honesty, it could be the best historical drama that HBO has ever made. Okay, okay, don't be mad. Game of Thrones doesn't count because it's fictional. Yes, there are some parts that are made up, but most of the story for this one's based on real events. This is an HBO production, so it's got all the PG-rated stuff you'd expect. The script is clever, but it's also got some swearing, violence, and decadence in it. Unlike most stories about Rome, this one doesn't shy away from showing the bad things that happen in an otherwise great empire. We get to see that ancient Rome was full of drunks, fights, womanizers, prostitutes, cheaters, adulterers, fornication, and a lot of questionable it shows the decadence and wickedness of the time in the best way possible. As big fans of Vikings, the only thing we didn't like about this place was that there wasn't much fighting. This one is more about telling a story. But hey, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Also, speaking of top-tier historical drama production, we used to think that it'd be impossible to make a better or more well-made show than HBO's Rome. But as soon as we saw a few episodes of the Borgias, we knew we were wrong. It's based on the actual Borgia family, who became powerful after Pope Innocent VIII died. As soon as Rodrigo and his family get the hang of things, everything turns into a mess. Even though there were a few problems, it's a pretty interesting TV show. It is, in a word, amazing to watch. Everything from the clothes, to the houses, to the hairstyles is right for the Middle Ages. It's totally accurate. The plot and pace are both perfect. This isn't your average soap opera. It's more like Vikings in Rome, we'd say. Everything's done perfectly. Of course, some more Vikings on screen. The Last Kingdom's one of the few shows about history that's mostly true to the source material. Let's face it, it's on BBC, which is usually pretty accurate. 
We don't know how much you care about accuracy, but if that's what you want, this show won't disappoint you. The story focuses on what happens to Uhtred after the Vikings take him away. They decide to keep him as a slave, and he grows up as one of the pagan people. Things get hard when he returns to his home country to get the land back from his uncle. He's got to learn how to live like a Saxon and fight against the people who raised him. Basically, there's a lot going on in this story. Then, there are some 14th century knights. The Bastard Executioner was made by Kurt Sutter, who also made Sons of Anarchy. The story takes place at the beginning of the 14th century. Lee Jones plays Wilkin Brattle, a former knight who had enough of war, but the war hasn't had enough of him yet, which is sad. He has to take up the sword again and show his people how to seek vengeance. This leads to a lot of chaos and high stakes in the drama. Kill or die is the only rule in this land. If you're going to steal ideas, take them from the best, and this show's done just that. It's got more blood than Game of Thrones, the setting and action of Outlander, and the plot of the return of Martin Gare, plus a huge cast. But the show does a good job of showing all of this if not too much. It is bloody, which is important enough to say twice. It's also gruesome, brutally violent, and not for easily scared people. Oh, and all of this is shot in a very painful close-up. Finally, let's visit good old Victorian London, except with a twist. Penny Dreadful shows a place where demons dressed up as people casually walk around the streets. A place where supernatural threats can only be stopped by people like Ethan Chandler, Sir Malcolm Murray, and Vanessa. No one's safe when the fog starts to move through this strange place. To stop the chaos, these three must work together. Together. We can't say much about the plot without giving too much away. It's better if you don't know what to expect from this show and just give it a chance. There's been other shows and movies set in the Victorian era, but none of them are as gorgeous as Penny Dreadful. Of course, it's possible that the action scenes with lots of blood will turn some people off, but if you can handle some blood, then this show's for you. The set design and filming were both great. Really, almost every frame looked like a beautiful gothic painting, and we never saw a CG background that looked fake. As for the actors, they play their mysterious and troubled characters with the kind of theater intensity that works well with the story and the turn of the century setting. We promise that the dialogue's smart and complicated. That's one of the major reasons why you should watch it. It's got the flamboyance of the Victorian era, but it's also very smart. When was the last time you heard a character in a TV show use the word outre? That's a wrap for this video. Which of these shows do you think is most like the Vikings? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.